question number four. Who is your typical multiple myeloma patient? This is an epidemiology question. Okay. Is it the 25-year-old female with history of previous valve replacement? Nine-year-old black boy with jaw mass, fever, night sweat? 70-year-old African-American guy, history of exposure to benzene and pesticides? 60-year-old male with heartburn, malignant B-lymphocytes, H. pylori in the stomach? Or is it 50-year-old male with abdominal pain, early satiety, splenomegaly, hairy cells in the bone marrow? Or the 50-year-old female with weight loss, splenomegaly, neutrophilia? Or the 21-year-old guy living in his mom's basement? Pause. Welcome back. The correct answer is C. 70-year-old. It's commoner in males than females. Multiple myeloma is more common in African-American patients. There is history of exposure to benzene or pesticides. Okay, it's not A, of course. B is what? B is Burkitt's lymphoma, which is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. How about D? D is marginal zone B cell lymphoma. How about E? E is hairy cell leukemia. How about the last one, F? This is what? Neutrophilia, splenomegaly, 922. This is chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML. The kid living in his mother's basement, is it's a tragedy, okay? It's not a medical condition, although it's very close. Fifth question, same patient. What's the best test to visualize these bone lesions? Is it radioisotopic bone scan, also known as nuclear bone scan? Is it plain radiography? Is it the MRI or the PET scan? Pause. The answer, of course, is plain radiography. X-ray, good old X-ray is the best to diagnose the bone lesions in multiple myeloma. Why not the nuclear bone scan? Because osteoblasts were not activated in multiple myeloma. There is no new bone formation. There is only bone destruction. And bone destruction is picked by plain x-ray and not on nuclear scan. Number six, how to detect these paraproteins in urine? By urine dipstick analysis, urine culture, urine electrophoresis, fractional excretion of sodium, or cystoscopy. Pause. The answer, of course, is urine electrophoresis. But pay attention, urine electrophoresis will only tell you the quantity of those Benz Jones protein. It will not tell you which one is which. Is it the lambda light chain or the kappa light chain? We have no idea using the urine electrophoresis by itself. The seventh question, how to know the subtype of M protein? In other words, how to know if it's IgG or IgA or is IgG lambda or IgG kappa? Is it by complete blood count? CMP, immunoelectrophoresis with immunofixation, serum protein electrophoresis, or ESR pause? And the answer is C, immunoelectrophoresis slash immunofixation. It will tell you the quality, not the quantity, the quality of the M protein, of the para protein. Which of the following will confirm, confirm the diagnosis of multiple myeloma? Is it the bone marrow biopsy showing plasma cells greater than 10% or the bone marrow biopsy showing plasma cells greater than 60%? Hypercalcemia, high creatinine, low hemoglobin and lytic bone lesions together, M spike on serum protein electrophoresis or multiple myeloma is a diagnosis of exclusion. Pause. And the answer is, believe it or not, it's B. Why not A? Okay, more than 10% of the bone marrow is one of the criteria of diagnosis, but it had to be present with something else, such as the end organ damage. But by itself, more than 10% is not diagnostic of multiple myeloma. We cannot confirm it yet. But if the bone marrow has greater than 60% of its total volume made of plasma cells, you got multiple myeloma. No question about it. You can't confirm the diagnosis with M spike because like uh, M gus, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, also will have M spike on serum protein electrophoresis, so shut up. 
Multiple myeloma is a diagnosis of exclusion. How come? A diagnosis of exclusion. Are you kidding when you have all of these tests? You're calling it a diagnosis of exclusion? No. Shut up. We're doing great. The patient comes back next day with severe back pain, loss of bowel and bladder control, palpable mass in the middle of his back. Whew. What's the best imaging modality for this emergency? CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, plain x-ray, MRI, nuclear bone scan, or myelogram? Pause. The answer is the great MRI. Myelogram is history, okay? You flip the patient upside down until and then you take an x-ray picture of it and if you like see an obstruction, you'll find an accumulation of fluid before the obstruction. This is history. Don't flip a patient upside down, okay? <laughs> I'll see you in court. Stop it. The MRI will check this because what's the diagnosis here? The diagnosis here is radiculopathy. Radiculopathy. What is the radiculopathy? Radiculopathy is a pathology of the nerve roots as they exit the spinal cord. This is different from neuropathy. Neuropathy is an injury or a pathology of a peripheral nerve, not like while just exiting from the center or the central nervous system. No, it's very peripheral. To diagnose radiculopathy, you need an MRI.